Hi everybody, welcome to my video. I begin in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, as always, I ask you for your help as I record your words. Please dip every word I speak on your behalf in your precious blood so that they reach the hearts and minds of all those you wish to communicate with. I ask this of the Father in your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, welcome to part two of a very, very powerful and beautiful message from Jesus. It's entitled, Jesus Speaks of the Rosary Salutation. And in this message, Jesus explains to us um, the importance of communicating with our Blessed Mother Mary. I repeat, our, O-U-R, our Mother, my Mother, and yours. Whether you acknowledge her, or love her, care for her at all, or whether you are a merry hater, a merry blasphemer, like many, many are, she is still your blessed mother. Okay, so he speaks of communicating with her through the use of the Hail Mary prayer. And I'll say this prayer because this is the prayer that he continues to analyze for us and tell us the meaning and how important it is to both saying the rosary and communicating with our Blessed Mother Mary. And please feel free to play with uh, to to say with me this beautiful, beautiful prayer which was a gift from heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And Jesus continues the message from the other day. And he's speaking in terms of the words of the Hail Mary once again. The Lord is with you or with thee, as in whatever way you would state it. And if the Lord is with her, being constantly in her company puts you in the company of the Lord too. For if it is your desire to be in her company, as in Mary, and in the company of our Lord, of your Lord and of the Eternal Father, then you will try in a greater way to obtain from uh, to abstain from whatever may deny you that company. So it is. The Lord is with you, and Jesus says, "If the Lord is with you, Mary, and you are with me, the one who prays." and I with you, therefore the Lord will also be with you. I'm sorry, therefore the Lord will also be with me through the proximity. And, and here's a side note. This is done in a sense of inner reasoning on the part of the one using the salutation. In other words, if we're uh, wanting to be with Mary, we are with Jesus at the same time, and Jesus will be with us. Um, remember that her... Mary's greatness was born with great humility. She was not quite aware of how great she really was and will be. Bear greatness with humility and the, and, and the greatness will magnify into greater greatness when the time of great rewards are at hand. And Jesus continues, Holy art thou, O Mother of God. That salutation he speaks of now. And Jesus continues, This is what you expressed in the shorter form of Holy Mary, Mother of God. Acknowledging her greatness, giving her the joy of continuously being reminded of her status, a status she never reminded herself of when she suffered on earth. Compensation now, great joy for her. Great joy when reminded of this, when you ask the Mother of God to pray for you, what greater intercessor could you have? When you are acknowledging your sinfulness, you are practicing humility, her greatest virtue, as in Mary's greatest virtue. 
Jesus continues with another salutation. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. And Jesus explains, now when we need you most, now when we are in grave danger from unholiness and all the vices which endanger men's souls. Pray for us now and at the hour of death. Let your prayers be a screen between us and damnation. I have a side note saying, again Jesus speaks as the one making the salutation. And Jesus continues, the prayers now can also assist those who fall from grace before death if they are being offered now, in the moment in which it is needed, and for the hour of death. But those who fall from grace and forfeit their prayers at the hour of death can still be prayed for, but the grace received is not nearly the same. The prayers of others are sometimes allocated them at that time of dire need, um, according to how much they have lived within the grace of God before the final time. Asking her to pray for you now will help to ensure that you die in the grace of the Eternal Father and His Son. And Jesus um, explains another salutation, which is, Pray for us now. Well, He speaks of this salutation now. How important this is. Her prayers for you now will help, you, help to keep you away from things which rob you of grace and will place you in a more advantageous position so that she can uh, pray for you at the hour of um, death when the evil one might be waiting to anxiously to get a hold of you then as he is to get a hold of you now. How efficacious will be her prayers for you then. How he will flee at her presence. How those prayers will light your way to heaven if you ask her now. She will not deny you then, unless you yourself have forfeited the grace of her presence. Pray well that she, who was humble and pure and full of grace, will keep you on the pathway of these virtues, this pathway which leads to heaven. Humility is not attained alone. It can only be attained with grace from heaven. No human can ever truly develop it without grace from heaven, no matter whom he might be. She who was the humblest of creatures can help you, as in Mary. Beware of false humility. It is a trap of the unholy one in which many are caught. Pretext of having this virtue when it is not truly within the psyche of an individual. Pray for the grace of humility. She will help you. Prudence is developed also with this virtue. It was pride which caused the downfalling of the evil one and his cohorts from heaven. Undue pride, unholy pride, creates false casings which entrap the soul and can lead us to its own downfall. Purity must encase the soul to protect it. Purity of thinking, of action, of word. Often there is a misconception of the idea of pureness. Many allocate this word only to bodily functions, to sexuality, to eating and drinking. But purity of thinking is most important. What one thinks of another, what one sees God in, what one says does and thinks must contain a certain purity. This is where my creatures fail without ever realizing that the impurity in their hearts is caused by unkind thoughts of others. Forgetting that each creature upon the earth, regardless, has been created in God's image, that is, a, that is as God saw him to be created, lack of sharing with those ne whose needs are greater than theirs, lack of understanding the feelings of others, complacency even in their own religious life and practices, all this, beloved, stain the soul with impurities. Hear well, Jesus tells us. And he continues, When you ask my mother's prayers, when you ask for my mother's prayers, you should ask that these failings be dispelled. If you listen well and follow her guidance, they will be. Perhaps not in a day or a year, but within whatever time you are given to learn the lessons of life. So be it. 
Praying for you now helps you to achieve the necessary virtues now and, and at the hour of death to be received into the company of heavenly ones. Tell those who belittle the recitation of my mother's rosary of the great graces from which they are turning away. I'd like to repeat this important, important line. Tell those who belittle the recitation of my mother's rosary of the great graces from which they are turning away. In other words, if you don't say the rosary, you are, many, you are missing many, many powerful graces which are intended to be given to you. There are those who honor her by wearing it, the rosary, as a necklace. Sometimes it is done as a means of protection for themselves, showing faith and that they accept it as a form of protection from evils. There are those who hang them in various places, homes, cars, etc. This too is pleasing to her and to us, for it is an acknowledgment of the, her holy power. For her power comes not from herself, but from the Holy Spirit, who has been especially allocated, even while she was on earth, to be with her and to be of great use to her and those who she recommends. Therefore, any acknowledgment of the grace and the power of her rosary is pleasing to her and to us. So be it. It is often called by the godless, a silly string of beads over which the, the papist babble. I will repeat this, and I ask you to search your own souls. Are you one of these people? It is often called by the godless, a silly string of beads over which the papist babble. Jesus says to pray for those people. Many will be led one day to learn how to use these selfsame beads to their own advantage and the glory of God of me, the Christ, and of the Blessed Mother, who is the Mother of all, the God-filled and the Godless alike, so be it. I beg, Father God, to enlighten us, our hearts and minds, and take away our pride, our foolish, foolish worldly pride, our sinful pride, our close-minded ignorance and our pride, that keep us from honoring and loving our Blessed Mother, that is one of the greatest gifts that heaven has ever bestowed upon us on earth. I ask this in the name of the Father, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.